Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I want to start here because Ray Flintes from Link2 explains to you about PolySun. This is why I've been scooping up PolySun on the platform. Watch this. If pricing, which is why we're constantly selling out. Take this opportunity to invest in Ripple and PolySign, two companies that share a special relationship driven by an overlap in world-class management. I'm referring to Ripple's co-founder, Arthur Brito, and Ripple's CTO and chief cryptographer, David Schwartz. These guys are leading blockchain architects behind PolySign's proprietary technology for securing or custodying tokenized assets, which includes crypto. Also, let's not forget that both Ripple and PolySign have a deep bench of advisors and board of directors who are world-renounced and come from highly regulated industries. This world is migrating to a digital world underpinned by institutionalized blockchain infrastructure, one that is secure, instantaneous, and thankfully interoperable. Ripple, PolySign, and even ourselves linked to, we're leading the charge and we- That's why I've been loading up, folks. Uh, I've got, I've got uh, PolySign in, <clears throat> the Ripple private equity. The link's in the top of the description. Go check it out. We have ourselves a missing person in crypto. Um, I saw somebody passing around one of those missing milk carton things with Barry Silbert's face on it. Remember, Barry Silbert is at the top of the stack. This guy is the CEO of the Digital Currency Group, which has it. He was one of the first. He had his hands in just about everything. And this guy's always been pretty active on Twitter as well. And he hasn't been seen since November on Twitter, folks. You have to wonder... And he, we've, we've heard rumors about Genesis, which is owned by the Digital Currency Group. I looked through his likes, his retweets, his replies, and nothing since November. If you look here, um, let's see, November 16th, last tweet. His last reply is November 16th. Um, his last like is November 10th, okay? Where in the world is Barry Silbert? Now, yesterday I posted this and I showed it to you in my last video, but I wanted to zero in on something to make sure everybody caught it. Because this video, let me do a little um, refresh here so that you can see how popular this video was. This is Digital Perspectives when he's on BitBoy's show. It's had 70,000 views. It's about and free allocation. And I you want you to listen to it. Right central bank's here. already holding some of it. You know, this gets quite interesting, too, because if you go into that uh, summary judgment, they have pre-allocated contracts, but we don't know exactly how many and to whom. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, folks, that's important. And a lot of people probably missed that in the summary judgment. But the other thing that's important to understand is we know we know two. We know that Greg Kidd and we know that R3 had option contracts on XRP. Well, where do you think? And Greg Kidd's was a billion, and I think R3's was like five billion. Well, where do you think? How do you think they would have structured that? It's not. It's not from Ripple. It'd have to be from the escrow if they've got. If Greg, Greg Kidd had a billion set aside, it would have to be. And you know, there was a rumor from Kendra Hill back in the day that Amazon also had five billion XRP. I wonder if Amazon had any pre-allocated option contracts. To d this was tweeted yesterday by ProCoinNews.com, who is the official sponsor of the Digital Asset Investor Hunting and Fishing Club. And they're, you know, we've heard all these 1215 settlement and or decision on summary judgment rumors, Charles Hoskins and Fox Business. What if, folks? I'm sure it'll be nothing, but what if? It's always fun to speculate, even though you're not allowed to do that. Is tomorrow the day that it all ends? Tomorrow being today. XRP settlement. Uh, judgment, something else, nothing, maybe nothing, but it sure is fun. My wife, I was actually talking to my wife about this and she said, call me if something happens. And you know, something interesting about my wife, for those, I don't talk about my wife much on this channel. Part of the reason is that she doesn't even listen to my show. My wife has never listened to one of my entire shows. <laughs> interesting piece of trivia. And it, it doesn't offend me. Because it's kind of like when your kid's in a play um, at school, 
you're you're almost like grabbing your seat because you're you're worried about them and you don't want them to mess up in front of all these people. I think it's that same th- reason. <laughs> that, <laughs> and I'm like, you just don't have any idea what I've been through. <laughs> so anyway, um, then Elnor Terrett says this new SEC enforcement director get. This guy that he's the enforcer for Gary says litigation against SBF will be supervised by Layden Stewart. Stewart currently serves as lead counsel to the SEC in the Ripple lawsuit. So what if, folks? What if? And we also have that sunshine meeting today. Then I said this. This is something people are not thinking about, folks. The SEC has failed twice to structure the crypto markets behind closed doors with market players so they could try and monopolize the markets for themselves and their friends. First with ETHgate, Joseph Lubin, Consensus, busted. Second, FTXgate, SBF, meeting with Gensler at CFTC, busted. Two times that our government has tried to structure something behind the scenes. This time, they were helping out a fraud. And Gary Gensler still has a job. From the politicians. I think it's interesting that that charge is in this early stage indictment. That sends a signal to me that DOJ is looking for bigger charges as relates to potential political corruption. Uh oh. I know a guy that you should go talk to, DOJ. His name's Gary. Um, okay, and then let me see what this is. Hold on. Old Mike Novogratz was on CNBC teeing it up again. Sell-offs of, of the, the same magnitude over the past 15 years, how many times? How many times have you seen the same magnitude sell-off only to see it go to new highs? Bitcoin, I'm, I'm talking about. Yeah, plenty, plenty. I, you know, I started in 2013, and so, uh, you know, we went from 200 to 1,000 and right back to 200, then up, you know, up, down, and up and down. Um, painful you know i always tell people sell something along the way uh right this is not you know trees don't grow to the sky in in a straight line uh and it's a really volatile asset right it remains a 60 vol asset which is you know three to four times the vol of the uh the S&P. unfortunately it it bitcoin itself is kind of held hostage by um the you know can we assume that all these exchanges are acting in good faith and not doing similar things to to what Sam Bankman was doing? It's a really, it's really dangerous to to think that you know when you, you have one black swan, you're going to see them everywhere, right? Like that you're going to have criminal organization black swans everywhere. Well, look, you had MF Global, but you didn't see these Wall Street people coming out and saying, "Oh, this means all of Wall Street could be uh, frauds and all." Yeah, that you never see that because this is a, an intentional attempt to take down crypto. Is what this really is, folks. Now. John Deaton is angry about what he saw out of Kevin O'Leary yesterday. And you remember Kevin O'Leary, his stance was Sam, that, that uh, CZ Binance caused, caused uh, FTX to go down and did not address the fraud that went on at all because, you know, he's paid $15 million to buy FTX. And John Deaton says, I just saw Kevin O'Leary's utter disgrace of an answer why FTX failed. He literally blames the entire collapse on CZ Binance and doesn't once say SBF fraud is to blame, even though he just got indicted on eight counts and is the biggest fraud since Madoff. Absolute clown. This guy, I'm telling you, this the this is how you, I mean, this is going to be around his neck and he's not going to be able to recover from this with any credibility, folks. He better abandon ship. But this is what happens when you go as long as he has being this arrogant. (laughs) Kim.com makes a really great point. CZ has been playing with fire in the U.S. establishment. Binance and CZ are targets now. Anyone who thinks that CZ can wipe out the second biggest donor of the Democratic Party without consequence is wrong. I'm sure there will be indictments next year. Pull out of Binance. After our FTX Twitter spaces and my comments about CZ's role in the FTX collapse, I've been contacted by Binance Insiders, former, uh uh-oh, he's got insiders, Binance Insiders, former and current. The stories they share, not just with me, paint pictures of the Wild West lawlessness. I'm certain that BZ and CZ have big trouble coming. Your crypto is not meant to be on a third-party exchange anyway. 
It defeats the whole purpose of crypto. Elon Musk and I warn you in our FTX Twitter space to withdraw your crypto from exchanges. Many others in the industry followed with the same advice. I think you ought to listen to him, folks. Ledger Nano S is in the description of this, this video. Top of the description if you want to get one. All right, and then uh, Peter Schiff. I don't understand why Kevin, how Kevin O'Leary can claim to have lost $15 million in FTX when the entire $15 million was given to him by SBF to pump FTX. Kevin's only loss to, is to his reputation. A lot of people who aren't nearly as rich lost hard-earned money due to his endorsement. CZ says, I agree with Peter on this one. Then CZ was on CNBC this morning. Let's go just back to, back to the, the, the specifics here. In 21, Sam Bankman-Fried said that he bought you out, your stake in the company. I imagine he, would tr he transferred funds to you, likely somewhere between two and three billion dollars, is that right? I remember it was $2.1 billion at the time, and okay. a big chunk of that is in FTT tokens, which are now worthless. So he sent you FTT tokens, and you believe that, that the majority of the $2.1 billion was that? Um, it's a combination of, um, I believe it was a combination of BUSD, BNB, and FTT. Um, I don't know the exact combination now, but it's probably about, um, I, I don't remember exactly, but FTT is a big chunk. And that's why we still have like, you know, we, even after the FTT price dropped over the last year, we still had $500 million worth of it, uh, $580 million worth of it on the day when we transferred from the address we received a year and a half ago. We never touched it. We actually, actually kind of forgot about it. And then um, we transferred it on the blockchain from that address we received to Binance.com. And that got picked up by the community. So in, the, in this industry, everything is very transparent. Well, but, but my question to you is a, a, both a bankruptcy uh, judge and potentially others uh, could seek, uh, like they did in the, in the case of uh, Bernie Madoff, frankly, to, uh, to seek to uh, claw back that money. Are you prepared to, to send that money to them? And by the way, I mean, I, and maybe this is uh, a risk to, to your firm, you know, some will measure it as uh, the value of FTT today. Some may measure it on the value of FTT at the time. So if you had to send a check in U.S. dollars for $2.1 billion, could you? So I think we'll leave that to the lawyers. Um, I think our legal team is per perfectly capable of handling it. My expectation, though, just from common logic, is that there was a lot of spendings um, after that transaction uh, in, the, in the more recent times FTF done to, you know, I mean, no, no, football stadiums, uh, referees, mm, spot. Um, after that, I was watching that interview, and after that interview, Jim Cramer comes on on cue and says, oh, I just don't trust that kid, this guy. He's not the next Jamie Dimon, as if Jamie Dimon is the standard. <laughs> I mean, this Jim Cramer. You know, all of, these pe all of these people who, even in front of Congress yesterday, to have, have this actor in front of Congress that's obviously been put up to doing it from the bad guys in government, I mean, it's so obvious what's going on, and then these people are always all being exposed in real time. Now, I think we have our first FTX whistleblower right here. We got some new details as well about what may have led to the arrest of FTX founder and former CEO Sam Bankman-Fried. What happened? Go ahead. Oh, uh, according to uh, newly released uh, Bohemian court records, uh, one of the uh, Bankman-Fried's closest associates and a co-chief executive of FTX Bahamas uh, entity telling regulators days before the company's bankruptcy filing that SPF likely funneled customer funds from FTX to cover losses at the hedge fund Alameda Research. This previously unreported contact between the former executive, uh, Ryan Salem, and the Securities Commission. All right, there's your first whistleblower right there. By the way, we never got one of those out of the SEC, including Hester Pierce in Eastgate. Michael Branch, according to several updates shared by Whale Alert today, more than 139 million XRP tokens have been moved by a non-whale with whales within the last 24 hours in four transactions. I do not know what an, a non-whale is. What is an, a non-whale? What's the difference between what's it, an, is it an XRP a non-whale? What does that mean? I know a non is like a reference to the Q movement, but what does a non have to do with XRP whales? Confused. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family that I don't know what an anon whale is.